The Jonski is a YouTube channel run by and run for people over the age of 13. People under the age of 13 should click off of this video right now or watch with a parent or guardian. Viewer discretion is advised. You don't scare me! Ah! Mills is freaking today, Militiaman. My name is King Prime, and welcome back to another video here on the YouTube channel. Today, we're going to be taking a look at a brand new figure, something I haven't looked at yet on the channel. Uh, that being the Transformers Studio Series 1986 Voyager Class Ironhide. So, real quick, let's just take a quick look at the packaging, and I will have to zoom out, unfortunately, to get it all in frame, because it, as you can see, takes up my entire view space. So, just taking a quick look at it to start off, we have a nice picture of Ironhide right there on the front with his blaster, the Transformers Generation trades, as well as Takara Tomy. The, 80, the Transformers the movie trades up at the top there. Uh, I might have ripped the box a little bit. Don't worry about that. Down at the bottom it says uh, 86 series. And this is the 17th figure in the line. There's his name down at the bottom. Uh, legal jargon on the bottom. On the side you have that nice same image of Ironhide. As well as a slip cover for the 86. Down at the bottom you have the authentic Transformers uh, approval seal thing. That Hasbro puts on all their figures now. Because third party started making better figures than them and then they got salty it's a whole ordeal on the back you have a nice little uh you know bio and stuff in different languages of the fun little things that the hasbro team has written about ironhide and his included things down at the bottom we have more bio stuff as well as 26 steps the product itself and that's that more legal jargon on the bottom, on the side, a very close-up image of Ironhide's face, and that is that, also, you know, words. Also included in this is the backdrop that I shall be pulling out momentarily, and this, of course, as we all know, is the backdrop of childhood trauma that we all love so much, this being, of course, the attack on the Autobot shuttle from the beginning of the Transformers 1986 film, uh, instruments of destruction, you know, tools of power and pain, all that stuff, uh, so if you want to traumatize your entire generation of children, here you go, that's that. Anyway, um, that's really all there is to the packaging, I say it in every single video I make, whether it be for Transformers, Fortnite, Star Wars, what have you. You only really care about this stuff if you are a carded collector, of which I am not. I like to open my toys and review them for you, and that is just what I am going to do. So, freeze frame. Autobots, transform! <laughs> hey, I'm stuck! I can't transform! <laughs> freeze frame on freeze, and here's our dear friend Ironhide in all his glory. Let me just do this a little out of order than what I usually do. Let me look at the accessories first, just because I can. He comes with these two blaster pistols that he uses in the film and then, you know, gets shot and dies with, uh, as we do, because, you know, such heroic nonsense and all that. Those are his pistolas, and of course you can give them to Ironhide and he can dual wield just like he did in the opening of the film. Unfortunately, we don't have a ratchet for him to get shot with, but he can, you know, do that. And he can yeehaw, cowboy, all that stuff. You can get him in a good uh, gun pose. Hell yeah, he's a gunfighter now. Very nice. But that is all he comes with in the ways of accessories. Let's take a closer look at Ironhide, though, and see exactly what he's all about. And I... <laughs> I'm just realizing that my uh, my overhead light is kind of shining through the plastic and making this look a little bit more illuminated than I would really, you know, like it to be. But it's, uh, you know, it's it's okay, I guess. It's just Hasbro quality plastic now. <laughs> but, you know, I'll bite my tongue on that one. So first off, you do have that very nice deep red all the way through the figure. And I will try my best to shield the light from this. Uh, the way down to the old feet as well all done up in that nice cherry red he has very nice metallic no are they metallic or are they matte i think they're matte yeah matte blue eyes for his you know his optics 
as well as that nice silver face paint that we are so used to for uh, a lot of these modernized G1 figures. Uh, his chest is made up of that same nice trans blue plastic that we've seen with a lot of figures. Uh, he also has it on his shins because that's, you know, uh, vehicle mode kibble, but, you know. Little tiny Autobot logo right on the front of the center of the chest there. It's a little bit off center, but it's not bad. It is very tiny, and it is very cute. That is the original, you know, uh, Autobot logo symbol. Uh, he also has, uh, you know, a crotch piece that doesn't really like to stick in all that much. It just kind of is there. So if you want to do the Devil Man kaboom thing with Ironhide, you could. You know, I, I think that's a little in, that's in character for Ironhide. I think. He also has the gray going down his thighs as well deeper grays on the hands as well as on the blocky shoulders which is very nice to see i you know it, it the this is a very simple figure but it's very satisfying to see uh sort of the the, the nice g1 modernized style uh, i like this and that's the thing that appeals to me so much with these transformers 86 figures um it's, I, I love the, the modern take on these G1 guys because this Ironhide figure fits the aesthetic so well of how modern figures should operate but still looks very G1-like, uh, which which I appreciate. I, I, like, I personally like that a lot. As for the articulation of this figure, we do have a ball joint at the head, which is kind of limited, but it's there. It's just very stiff for whatever reason on my copy, but it's fine. You can also technically cheat uh, an up and down joint because of uh, the hinge right there for the uh, vehicle mode, for the transformation. The arm can go out that far and there's a nice piece here, like ligament or, or I guess protoform would be the transformer's term for it, um, that extends when you extend out and hides arm. It's just a nice touch. It can also rotate all the way around. You also have an upper bicep swivel as well as a bend at the elbow can only really go about 90 degrees though, which kind of sucks, but it's fine. Um, you have an up and down <laughs> joint there at the hand, but that again, that is just really for transformation, as well as a wrist swivel. You do have a nice rotation at the waist. Personally, I think that this is a little too loose. Uh, this entire figure is just a, a bit loose. I think that's just my copy though. And, but, you know, if any of you have seen my previous videos, you know how, how I think about Hasbro's uh, quality on their figures is tanking as of late, um, although I haven't uploaded in a month, so some of you may be new. So, you know, more on that later, I guess. I'll, I'll comment on that in a later video, but it doesn't really matter right now. Let's talk more about the figure. You do have a very nice, and I excuse the, you know, exposing here of Ironhide, but uh, you, you do have a hinge joint at the knee that can go that far out, as well as a dumbbell joint, as you can see right there, that allows the leg to kick forward that far and that back. So you got pretty good range of articulation there at the leg. You also have a thigh swivel, as well as a bend at the knee that can go about that far only about 90 degrees but that's i'm kind of more used to that for with these transformers figures than i am for like vintage collection however at the feet you do have a very wide range of motion you have that far down all mostly because of the transformation so you have a very deep <laughs> toe hinge there as well as a good ankle pivot so you can get some nice uh, dynamic iron hide poses like uh he can do the uh, the splits which is which is very fun that's about it for articulation then. Uh, let me real quick get in, let me real quick zoom out and we can get on to the size comparisons and hopefully I won't keep knocking around the camera because I need to put this thing on a box to actually film this review. So freeze frame. Damn, did you? Damn, did you? Freeze frame on freeze. Here is our friend Ironhide. Next to some more contemporary figures that you know many people may know. Here, for example, is a Lego minifigure of Luke Skywalker, which is very fun to see. Uh, here is the all so familiar to this channel golden standard of action figures himself. The Star Wars of Vintage Collection Dark Times Darth Vader. And here he is with a old childhood classic, the Transformers Classics 2006 Optimus Prime. So you can kind of get a 
idea of how he stacks up there. And I have seen many videos pointing out that this figure is the same exact height as the uh, Earthrise and the War for Cybertron Siege Optimus, op Optimus Seas, Optimi, Optimus Primes, multiple, yes, figures. So he's the same exact size, so this is how he scales with that figure as well. Which is always nice to see, but I will take that away because I want to put him back up on my shelf. Anyway, that is it for the size comparison. Let us move on now to the transformation. So, freeze frame. Yeah. That's all. Oh. Freeze frame on freeze. So the first thing you're going to want to really do with this Ironhide figure is I always start from the bottom up uh, just because of how this figure operates. That's probably for the best. I just start working on his legs. So first thing you're going to want to do is pull down his feet as you see here. So just pull down both of his feet and, and flip down this panel, which will eventually become the rear of the van mode or the, the uh, love truck mode. And then inside here, there is a window that is hidden away that you can fold out like so and then you can just move up to the top of the figure the next thing you're going to want to do is pull out this backpack to just free up some room this will eventually become the um, front bumper of the vehicle mode you can fold up these arms which kind of sort of tab in here as you can see there's a little 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 clip and a little hole sort of tied in not really so securely but you know you just want to get those out of the way so you can work on the chest with the chest here you want to open that up and lift up this entire chest piece so that his chest is sort of just floating there in midair and then you can fold away iron hides head like so but don't close this quite yet because inside here there are two little clear pieces which eventually become the side windows or the, the upper side windows of the, uh, the the passenger and the driver's side doors. Just a little note here, this piece, it has actually shown a little bit of stress. So just be careful with it. Um, this is, I think this is just a bad copy for of my figure. I don't think all the um, iron hides are like this that have been released in this line. It's just a matter of which one you get. Mine is just not the best. So buyer beware, of course. You can, of course, then... Fold closed Ironhide's uh, windshield there, which doesn't tab in, it just rests there for now. It'll tab in eventually in a minute. Uh, but as we see, saw, at least before it tabbed itself back in, uh, we are supposed to have this sort of like floating torso here. Uh, what you want to do is rotate. I would I like to pull up so that the wheels don't pop off, which they have been known to do. Uh, full, pull up and then rotate at this hinge, as you just saw me do. This just rotates freely, rotate at that hinge, and then you can sort of just allow this to fall forward. And you can close up the hood, or the hood, you can close up the front bumper now. It won't harm anything if you do. So there is the front of the vehicle now transformed. Next, you're gonna wanna start folding back Ironhide's arms and just make sure that they're straight-ish, you know, and not folding out so often. Uh, and then, of course, there's a little slot there and a peg there for the uh, forearms, which you can just peg together. Next, for Ironhide's hands, you just fold them down like so, and they don't go all the way, and they just sort of sit there at an angle. You want to angle up his shoulders just a little bit so that his forearms are level with the piece that's currently attached to the chest, which will become the roof. There will be a little piece that attaches here in a minute. Next thing you're going to want to do is return to the legs. You can now tab these together and actually get a, you know, sort of secure connection with these so that they're not flopping around so much. Next, you're going to want to flip up these two panels, which will I'll reveal these hinges in here where you can fold up the, well, at least what will become the rear of the vehicle. So you can see that there, and once those are up, uh, they can clip together. And these two pieces here, there is a little, I will try to my best to show it. Uh, there are two teeth right there, two teeth, and then there are two holes. You really can't see it because of the light glare. Two holes right there, and one inside of the rear of the truck right there. Those will tab together like so, and you can move that out of the way so you can actually see it, like so. 
And of course you want to make sure that the rear pieces are also tabbed together. They just sort of fit. Uh, they don't really tab so securely. Next thing you want to do is just angle the uh, waist with the, uh, so the forearms can then connect to the rear roof of the vehicle, like so. You see now they are flush together. And as you saw, I moved these pieces earlier, but these are uh, pieces from the legs. You can then begin to fold these out. I uh, fold them out like this, just 90 degrees, and then flip up these side panels, which will become the sides of the vehicle, and then rotate them shut like so, and like so. These will then attach in the middle here, and then comes, at least in my opinion, what is the hardest part of the vehicle uh, transformation, where you have to get these two tabs inside of this little hole right here. And this is what causes the stress on the little tab that uh, rotates out for the window. It's very annoying, but the, I just called... <laughs> You are kidding me. Every single time I've transformed this figure before this review, I had at least like 20 minutes of struggling with that damn tab. And it just goes in like that. I, uh, oh, Transformers. Anyway, there, my friends, is the vehicle mode all nice and transformed. And this is a nice vehicle mode. Um, I really like it. Uh, it, you can't really tell, but there is kind of like two different shades, even like three different shades of red um, on this vehicle because this, of the different plastics you use. Like this entire piece right here is just trans clear blue plastic painted red. So it's a darker, like more maroonish. And then this red and this red for the like actually load bearing parts are like sort of like almost pink like salmon colored and then the rest are just like cherry red it, it's weird you can't really tell in my lighting maybe if i turn off my light you can tell a little bit better yeah you can definitely see it there uh it, it's an amalgamation but it's not so bad this is at least in my opinion the best iron hide figure for in the g1 style that's been made i really enjoy it the bumper here is picked out in nice silver plastic there's no headlight detail or anything in the windshield wipers aren't picked out but it is still pretty nice, and of course that Autobot symbol from his chest then becomes the badge on the front of the vehicle there, which is nice. And on the back, you do have these two parts trying to come apart, but you do have a light, nice little spot back here for a license plate, uh, which you could put on if you so chose. I don't have one, and I don't want to put one on. Of course, the hubcaps are also picked out in that silver plastic, and... As you can imagine, this thing rolls because it's a, you know, a vehicle, which is very nice. Uh, you can also, of course, have some weapon storage on this guy. You have, you have two square holes on the uh, blaster pistols that you can tab into these trans clear blue pegs right there. So you can have them facing forward so he can be a gun truck. Or you can face them backwards and pretend they're like... I don't know, jet boosters for your van. So if you're really in a hurry to get to the school, you can... Or you also have some options where you can tab this into the underside of the uh, rear of the vehicle and pretend that these are just uh, mufflers, which are... This is actually my preferred uh, storage method, but it kind of hinders the rolling, at least when you mistransform the figure. Apparently, when you do it as perfect as I did, it doesn't affect the rolling whatsoever. So that's very nice to know. But anyway, uh, for a size comparison, let me quick bring in our old friends again. Here is our dear friend Luke, who is, at least from what I can remember in scale with these figures from the Studio Series 86. Not quite sure, can't remember. I'll have to watch Lazy Eyebrows review again. I I can't remember. Uh, here he is next to uh, the golden standard of action figures himself, Darth Vader. And, of course, our dear friend. We'll have to move the camera back for this. And move Luke to the side. Classic 2006 Optimus Prime. And those two look good together. So, you know, this is our, our Peter Cullen shot <laughs> of the two characters that he voiced in G1. So... Very nice indeed. Freeze frame. No! I don't want to die! Freeze frame on freeze. So overall, I do actually really like this figure. I think, like I stated previously, that this is the best 
G1 styled uh, Ironhide in the chug scale that we've gotten so far. Uh, definitely <laughs> leaps and bounds better than the classics Ironhide mold. And I can't wait to review more of these Transformers 86 figures while we wait for the inevitable uh, drops of the next Vintage Collection figures because there is a little bit of a lull between those. So I, I'm very happy to at least have this one to finally add a good uh, Red Ironhide, I'll call him Red Ironhide instead of, you know, G1 style Ironhide, to my collection. So, my friends, that's going to be it for this video. If you like Ironhide, if you like Transformers 86, if you like Transformers G1, Transformers in general, or any of that stuff, make sure you share this video with your Facebook groups, share it with all your friends, all that good stuff. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe down below. That really helps the channel grow. It helps keep me making these awesome reviews for you. Thank you all so very much for watching, and as always, my friends, peace.